webinar. This is actually the, the second one that we had. We had previously, we have in the morning uh, also a session. Uh, today we're going to focus on the object counting uh, technology and uh, the solution itself. Uh, the object counting is very much relevant in these days in the COVID-19 uh, situation. And uh, according to our uh, understanding and so experience, it's, uh, there is a very quite high demand for such a solution uh, during the, the corona. Um, during the, your microphone currently are off, are muted. We're gonna open it again in the end of, of the seminar for open question. During the seminar, you are very welcome to write your question over the chat and we will do our best to answer during the webinar or in the end. Please note that the webinar is, reco is recorded uh, later on, uh, it will be available at our website, at our uh, uh, webinar live uh, section, where you will able to find uh, all our previous uh, webinars and also to register yourself for, for the future one. Uh, the webinar today will be run by my colleague from technical department, Mr. David Siboni. So hope you will enjoy it. Go ahead, David. Thank you, Onen. In the end, also, we are going to show how to uh, enter into the website and where to uh, look uh, forward to it. It's very easy, but always good to know. Um, okay, so let's uh, spare you guys uh, uh, the time. Let's start with our today's, uh, today's module. We are running module number four today for the object counting which is a direct, it's a part of the DDA certification program that we are about to launch uh, really soon. Um, of course, the bottom line, the main goal for why we actually do that is to provide a better solution for our clients, distributors, and generally for anyone who uses our uh, equipment, because of course we want to provide a better solution um, uh, and performance to everyone. So let's start. What are we going to talk today? Of course, we're gonna talk about the introduction. We're gonna introduce uh, the people counting, the object counting and understand what it is and what it is made for. Application scenarios, we are going to, of course, uh, see where this uh, feature is, uh, co is com coming handy for us and okay, where to use it. We're gonna talk about some tips for optimal installation Okay, if we don't install the camera in the proper uh, location, angle, direction, heightness, then things might, uh, the camera might recognize in a lower uh, percentage. So, of course, we're going to touch that as well. We're going to see object counting settings, how to set it up. It's very easy, but still uh, should be uh, touched. Uh, of course, we're going to do it from the IP camera, which we're going to do it through the presentation. But when we will do it through the NVR, and Osaya VMS, which is our uh, video management system. Uh, we're gonna do it live from those platforms uh, uh, live. So, and of course, in the end, I forgot it. It is the fine tuning, fine tuning, how to basically to, to make sure that everything is working. After we finish off with the installation and everything, now we want to make sure that everything is working. So what is the uh, people counting? It is based on the line crossing. Okay, basically you draw a line, the user draws a line from one side to another. Whenever somebody is crossing that line, we're gonna get some kind of an event, but this is for line crossing. On counting, whenever an object is crossing the line, that object is counted both entrance and exit. Okay, so the user draws a line in the scene and sets both crossing direction and crossing permissions. When the chosen object crosses the line, it will trigger an alert, of course, uh, it will count. What is important to know is that the camera doesn't know when the fingertip of a person has crossed this line. The camera actually draws a, an object box that surrounds the object. Okay, so if you will look on the frame of the camera, when you say human passes by, you're gonna see an object box surrounding him, just as we're gonna see in the following example. 
Okay, so if you take a look, you can see that there is an object box surrounding this person that is walking. You can see that the object box is painted green. Okay, we can see that it is in the color of green. This is the line crossing right where my mouse is, right here, the blue line crossing. Okay, as soon as this person is leaving, is exiting, take a look also at the human counter that says 118. I hope you guys can see it since it's very small. Uh, but let's see. As soon as this person is exiting, we can see that the line has turned red and the object box turned uh, yellow. So basically the camera detects, uh, the camera counts and the number changed to 119. So the camera uh, doesn't care about the human, it cares about the object box. This is what matters. This is what that, uh, that actually makes the counting. Why is this so important? Because that it helps us to install the camera in a better way. If we know that there is an object box that surrounds the person and it's not the person itself. Okay, uh, of course, these object boxes can be seen throughout the NVR. If you on the local uh, of the NVR, you can turn it on or off and through the camera itself from the web uh, interface. Application scenarios, where, why, how? We can probably think about 1 million different applications that we can use counting for, especially in the era of COVID-19, but uh, we narrowed it down to a main two. So let's imagine a building. You don't want to allow this building to, uh, you don't want to allow people to enter into this building more than 25. No more than 25 people will be able to enter. Of course, you can set any number you want, but in this case, it's 25. So our selected uh, rule will be object counting, of course. The threshold will be 25 people limit. The distinguished object will be humans, of course, if you're talking about buildings, but you can also add humans and two-wheel vehicles. Many people go with their bikes into, uh, into, into the building, so it can count, count that as well. Uh, and the triggers, of course, this is just an example. You can set many more triggers or many less, depends on what you want. Recording, of course, push notification to your phone, audio alert, email message, you, you name it, uh, you can have it. Another... Um, Another example will be a parking lot, okay, so, or any or a car yard or anything that has uh, vehicles inside and you want to, to know how many vehicles are inside. So of course, we're gonna use object counting, same as before, the limit that you will set. In this case, it's 100, you can set whatever you want. The distinguished object in this case will be four wheel vehicle, but you can also add humans or two wheel vehicles to, at the same time. And the triggers, same as before, the triggers that you want. Next subject will be how to install the camera properly. Now, uh, we will pre basically gonna give advice on how to install the camera since unlike motion detection cameras that you can practically just put the camera wherever you want. And as long as there is a motion, you gotta get, you're gonna get a recording. In analytics, it works a little bit differently. We need to make sure that the camera recognizes, detects the object. It's not very complicated installation, but still it has to be done in the ideal uh, uh, recommendations. Uh, and if you don't do it, it will just recognize, but in lower percentage. So how to place a, okay, of course, before we're gonna see the installation, we're gonna understand something more, a little bit more about the object box. And in this, in this case, it's very important to understand the correct way to install the camera will be from the side. Okay, we can see people that are passing by from the left to the right crosses the line. This is the exactly the same video that we just saw. Okay, but now we're going to see what happened in a wrong installation. This kind of installation is very good for line crossing, but for counting, it could be problematic. We can see that in this case, the camera is placed in front of the objects. So as uh, when people are walking by in this uh, kind of uh, pattern, it means that uh, one object might hide the object box of the person behind him if those people are walking too close to one another, okay? So for line crossing, it, it can be good, but for counting, since we want to have a separation between one individual to another, then in this case, it's less good. And of course, we would want to have a better uh, uh, an installation from the side and not from the front. Dimensions. Cameras has limitations, of course, and uh, nonetheless, the, 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 if we will 
consider the fact that the camera needs to identify a, a shape of a human or a shape of a vehicle, then of course that the camera has some limitations. Now we divided the frame of the image into a grid of blocks that we can see right here. Uh, the grid of blocks to the width are, is a 4% and to the height is 8%. Uh, if we want to recognize a human being, the minimum size required for human recognition will be, uh, it will be for a uh, one square, which means 4% to the wide and 8% to the height. And we can see a person right here where you can see the laser. Okay, you can see a person exactly in the, um, in the size of this, uh, in, of this block. And as soon as uh, we can see here, if we want to recognize a, a vehicle, since it's way larger, then the minimum for, minimum for a vehicle will be two blocks. So eight for the height and eight for the width. So in short words, let's make it shorter. The, uh, for a four wheel vehicle, we need eight on eight and for humans, four on eight of a size. Now, of course, as we can see here, a human that is way smaller, it's very far away. So the human is way smaller than the object, than the grid. So the camera in this kind of location will not be able to recognize this human, even though that we can identify it. Even if we, if we look very close, we can see that this is a human, very good, but for the camera, it's a little bit too far. So we need to take that into consideration. And now we're gonna get a final, a, a bottom line, this grid of blocks will be implemented into the latest firmware of our cameras. So you will be able to do to see it when you install the camera to have a better uh, and easier installation. You can tell someone to stand, to stand uh, where people will occasionally walk by. Then you're gonna make sure that you're gonna understand if in the future the camera will keep on recognizing or maybe it will half work or not work at all. Now, same as we saw a good way, we saw the objects uh, that are being detected and what is the limitation for the distance. We can see the same thing of how, to, how, how not to install the camera. So in this case, okay, we can see it again, the minimum and the maximum, uh, the minimum for a vehicle, the minimum for a human being. And in this case, we can see uh, that they're relatively, the images uh, are very, very different than the slide before. Okay, so in this case, the human beings and the vehicles are way too small to be detected. The camera will most likely maybe recognize the buses, but uh, no more than that. So of course we need to make sure that even though that we see the image clearly and we see people and cars, the camera won't, the camera won't recognize them. How to install the camera? The installation of the camera has a pretty clear uh, recommendation. Our recommendation is between 2.2 meters to 10 of a height. Now, it doesn't mean that if you install it at 11 or 12 meters height, it won't work or one and a half. It will just in lower percentage. So the, and also if we will take in, into consideration the angle of the camera, then uh, which we're gonna talk about really soon, then also it's better to, to follow the recommendation that we state here. Uh, in this case, we can see human, a human can be detected from a distance of between one to 40 meters. Okay, depends on the camera lens. A 2.8 camera is very different than a 12 millimeters camera. In this case, the human being stands about 10 meters from the camera. He's going to be detected. For a vehicle, of course, since a vehicle is way larger than a human being, the distance is a, a little bit farther. So we can see between three to 50 meters away. Okay, also depends on the camera lens. Uh, so a vehicle can be detected from also 50 meters away. Okay, and the most distant uh, uh, location that it can be recognized is actually 70 meters. Okay. What will be the recommended camera angle? Okay, where the object are, is supposed to be uh, compared to the location of the camera. So when we are talking about humans, if you want to detect humans, almost any angle will be okay, will be sufficient and you're gonna get the recognition um, from the side, okay, from the front. Also take into consideration that this we're talking about detection but for counting, of course, we said that it's better to have it from the side. Um, if uh, one of the, if the upper body of a human is hidden for some reason, 
not because he's wearing a box like here, but because of uh, some other logical thing, then uh, the camera won't be able to recognize it since the camera has a built-in algorithm with a lot of uh, uh, reference images that, that actually tells the camera that this is a human. One of them is the upper body, including the hands, okay, and the chest, uh, neck, head, eyes, all of these. So if those uh, uh, live, if those uh, organs are hidden, then the, this person will not be recognized. Uh, one important thing is, since the camera uh, understands that this is a, a person, detects a person because of his entire body, then when the camera is installed directly from the top of a person, the camera will most likely won't recognize it since it's only seen the head and the shoulders like the shampoo, head and shoulders, but it's not going to actually detect uh, the human being. Uh, so if even if it's very logical for us to install the camera directly above the entrance to a, a shop, don't do it because the camera will miss. It will recognize every once in a while a person, but not with the percentage that we can actually get. Okay, so again, I will tell you, install it from the side. What about vehicles? The wheel vehicles, will be detected from the side same as a same as a vehicle same as a human you can also get a little bit of angle okay it won't do any harm you can have an angle you can also get a, a, a recognition for a bikes that are driving like this uh, directly in front of the camera but it's not ideal okay since the camera is seeing the 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 wheel uh, so of course it's better to install it from the side what about four wheel vehicles in four wheel vehicles we can see a diagram that has a lot of green color it means that the angle that the camera can detect is between 30 to 45 degrees which is a lot you can actually get a lot of uh, uh, different angles to detect the vehicle unlike human beings unlike human beings if you want to capture a vehicle a vehicle can be captured from the top directly from the top so if you place a camera on the top of a entrance to an, a parking manager a, a parking lot is going to work next this is a, a working tool okay this is a working tool for you guys uh, this is a table that states the distances uh, for the recognition for any camera uh, regardless of the, depends on the lens of the camera so if it's a 2.8 camera the recommended height height to install the camera will be 2.2 to 10 meters the longest distance that this camera will recognize a pedestrian non-motor vehicle will be eight meters okay this is the longest meter what is the recommended distance to place the camera for human beings one until eight meters for vehicle we can see that the numbers are slightly higher 15 meters each is the longest uh, distance and they recommended also between three to 15. now another word about the 2.8 meters a uh, millimeter cameras there is let's read it the far end of the camera meaning the edges of the camera okay the far right far left far bottom far top of the camera uh, have a slight distortion okay the image is not flat it means that you can barely notice it with the bare eyes but when we talk about analytic that might uh, affect the probability of uh, getting the recognition now, usually the edges of the camera will anyway be very far from the will be far from the frame itself okay so if you draw the line on the top of the image you, you actually draw the line about 40 50 meters away it uh, depends of course on of the scene so uh, this is just a quick note to understand that it's better to have the recognition first set up to be in the middle of the of the image and not on the edges Okay, same as we did for the 2.8, we have here the uh, same parameters for any other camera that you want, 3.6, 12, and 22 millimeter cameras. Um, now we're going to work about the guidelines for how to, how to actually position both the lines and the camera. So let's start with the, the lines, okay? Guideline for line positioning. The object is clearly visible when crossing the line. This is one point we need to take into consideration. Uh, it means that we need to draw the line in the middle or in the right or in the left, but never on the edge. Okay, not here. Why? Because that when a person is walking from the right to the left and the line is right here in the edge of the screen, 
the camera will count him when he leaves the frame. But the camera will never recognize this person when he enters the frame because the camera didn't have enough time to, to distinguish, to detect the shape of an object, of a familiar object. Okay, so the line should always give approximately one second a, of a clear view for the camera into the object before he's crossing the line. One second. The line covers most of the area where the object is passing. We're gonna see an example of the exact opposite up ahead. Uh, but basically you draw the line, draw a big line that covers most of the area where the object is passes. If the line is very small and on the bottom like here, it's not gonna work because usually the person will walk on the rail and will miss the entire point, will miss the, uh, the line. The line. Guidelines for positioning the camera. So we talked about the line, now the camera. Do not place the camera directly above objects, mainly for human recognition. We remember it, we just talked about it. Not directly, no direct light on the camera, since it will dazzle the camera and make it go darker in order to comprehend the amount of light that is thrown on it. So it will harm the ability to recognize. No strong light behind the object. If you have a human and there is a strong loom of light that is flashing on this human, it might uh, uh, make the object look very dark. Okay, human or vehicle will be very dark, making it hard for the camera to, uh, to recognize it. Those are things that we need to also think about when we install the camera first time. Maintain the optimal distance between the camera and the object. Optimal distance, the table before. Okay, don't, if we, if we place the camera, we had some cases that people told us, okay, the installer told us the camera do not uh, recognize people. Uh, we entered into the camera and we realized that the 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 object the objects whether it is a human or a, or a vehicle were so far away from the camera that it had no chance to to detect it this is partly this is the also the reason why we uh, do this uh, educational seminars okay so optimal distance very very important also objects should move from side to side not towards the camera we keep on mentioning that in different opportunities just to make sure that it's not uh, otherwise. And we have heard a small remark regarding 2.8 cameras, but we already talked about it. So moving ahead to the next part, uh, correct installation examples. We have here a good installation from the side. It's in our offices. We can see that the line is very clear. We can see that the person is very clear. No chance for the camera to miss it whatsoever. Uh, very good. Same goes here. In this case, we, we, this, this is a real installation from a shopping mall in Argentina. Um, a very large entrance, as you can see. Okay, so it can detect many people at the same time uh, in a condition, of course, that the object box is not totally hidden by another person. Um, of course, we have a huge line. Okay, we can see here a huge line that uh, people will, uh, will cross for entrance and exit. Um, okay, good angle and good height. In this case, we can see a, an installation made in order to detect vehicles. Okay, so vehicles that are moving at up to 70 kilometers per hour will be detected. Of course, there is a need for one second before the vehicle touches the line to give the camera a chance to recognize a vehicle, then it will be detected. Uh, the camera is uh, far for humans, but close for vehicles. Okay, we can see it with our eyes. Uh, which is good because in this case, I hope that people do not get caught inside this road. It looks like it's look, it looks dangerous. And a parking lot for um, uh, trucks. Okay, also, this is a good angle. It will capture the truck, which is in, coming from the from or uh, out from this uh, gate, uh, crosses the line, will be detected. It seems fine. Uh, height and angle are good. Now we're gonna see some some examples for wrong installations. So uh, example number one, okay, we can see here a top view. First of all, this is a top view for humans, which we talked about that it's not recommended uh, to get recognition. Secondly, it's way too far. It's very, very far above the, uh, the recommended distance for a camera. It's more than uh, 10 meters. Okay, it's about 40 maybe. It won't be able to recognize that people are too small, maybe every once in a while. And of course, there is a huge mass of people. The camera has limitations. 
okay? The limitation can be over 10 people at once, but of course it depends on the people uh, that are, uh, the object boxes that are visible for the camera, okay? So if the people are crowded all together, it won't be able to count them. But if the persons are uh, divided and the object boxes are visible, then there should be no problem. So in this case, we need to lower down the camera and get some angle, a good angle in order to get uh, a good recognition. In this case, okay, in this case, the camera is located frontwise. So if two people will walk one behind the other, one will hide the object box of the other person. Okay, and then the other person won't be counted since he didn't have an object box surrounding him because most of his body was hidden. Okay. But other than that, the height is okay. Um, uh, the height is okay. And for line crossing, for example, this is perfect. Line crossing, okay. But counting, since we want to actually count, not okay. Um, here we have a similar example for the top, just that in this case, it won't even recognize vehicles. Everything is way too small. The camera is way up in the sky. Um, Okay, so not to mention the people that are very, very tiny, the vehicles also, it's probably not gonna detect, detect anything. And also it's very far above. So if you want only to get vehicles, we can take the camera a little bit lower, but keep the angle, because remember that the cars can be detected uh, directly from the top. Last, uh, last example for wrong installation. In this case, the installation is okay, actually. The thing that is wrong here is the line. And why is that? The line, take a look. The line is drawn in the halfway of the, halfway of the screen, trying to capture and count people and vehicles that are coming and going from the camera. And we talked about that it's not recommended. We want to have it from the side. So a good thing to do here would be just to take the line from where it's located and place it from the left and right. So that only, only people that are crossing from the left and right will be detected and not from up to, uh, up to down and down to top. Uh, other than that, the height is okay and the angle is also okay. Environmental conditions, environmental conditions. This is a hard word to say. Uh, and external factors. Now, we're gonna, I'm gonna say here, let's, let's read it. In some cases, there will be unexpected changes in the scene which are not within our control. Of course, if you have a hurricane or something severe that's going on, a severe fog like this, for example, the camera might, uh, might not count, might not recognize. Uh, of course, it depends on how, how clear the objects are. So of course, it, it really depended. Uh, luckily, the camera can detect even through rain and fog and snow, the camera will still recognize Okay, but up to a certain level. If the uh, if the weather is too severe, then we can forget about it, or uh, it will take down the percentage of recognition. But uh, in regular uh, weather, okay, something that is not extreme, it will work. Settings: how to set up the counting. Okay, the line for the counting. Now, setting is very very simple. We're gonna see it through the camera. We're gonna see it from the presentation. Okay, to spare some time, we're not gonna do it from the camera itself. We're gonna see it through the presentation and we're gonna see how to set it up through the in NVR interface and how to set it up through the VMS interface. It's very good. Let's start with the camera. So how do we access the camera when we want to access the camera? Open up a browser, fill in the IP address of the camera and the port, if it's not AD, of course, username and password, and we are inside. Once we're inside, Press config, this is it. We're in config, we're gonna get the menu. Under analytics, we can find any analytic that we want, including people counting. So under analytics, choose the counting that you, the analytic that you want, and let's choose object counting. Once you choose it, you're gonna get this kind of a window. You probably won't see anything unless you press enable, okay? We press enable, we press save, and then we get the entire screen that we can see right now. Um, we can choose what objects. First of all, we can choose the objects that we want to detect, human, uh, vehicles, two-wheel vehicles. You can choose all of them at once. It doesn't matter. Um, you can choose uh, the threshold, 
What is a threshold? A threshold is simply the term uh, setting up a limit for how many objects can enter, can access. So you can set a different threshold for a human, for a vehicle, and for a two-wheel vehicle. Of course, this uh, setting up here a threshold is not a must. You don't even need to use it because most likely you won't use the camera to create a, an, an event which is based on the threshold. Usually we will use a VMS and we'll explain it really, uh, really soon. Um, okay, here we can set the counter. Okay, we can see on every camera, we can see the counter. We're gonna see it live very soon. Uh, basically the counter is the one that shows you uh, the amount of people, vehicles that entered and left. You can choose how often the counter is going to reset every day, every week or every month. Okay, the camera will automatically reset the counter. And finally, an alarm, an alert. Okay, so if the camera has an alarm out, you can trigger an alarm out. So whenever the 20 people that you set will cross this camera, this uh, counting for the camera, the camera itself, it can even work as a standalone in, kind of, in that kind of a, of a scenario. It will activate the siren or lock the door. Okay, you don't want any other person to enter into the building, lock the door and then uh, using the alarm out. Uh, of course, also you can snap into an SD card or record into an SD card, trigger an email or send the information into the FTP. Next, we will press the area. Okay, pressing the area and it is bringing us into here. Uh, in area, we're gonna see a live view from the camera itself. We're including the ability to, uh, uh, to draw a line. Okay, we can draw the alarm. In this case, we have one line to draw because this is a counting. You can choose the direction, okay? The direction to cross it, to crossing the line, what will be an entrance and what will be an exit. So actually, if it's from A to B or from B to A, um, as we can see right here, uh, statistics. If you will press the, the stat if you will untick the statistics, we won't see the, um, the information that is written in white on the top of the of the screen. The information actually says entrance. It's very small, but uh, let's read it together. Entrance, exit, and stay. It means how many people entered. We have entrance for human and for bike and for a, a car. Okay, so entrance and exit for those objects as well. Uh, and we have the numbers, how many entered, how many left. So press the statistic to just not show it. The camera will keep on counting, but will not show the, the on-screen data since now maybe you don't want to show it to everyone. Next, we're gonna press the schedule, which is right here. And then we're gonna get this window, the schedule window. Very simple, you have days and you can just uh, choose when that task is going to be active. Okay, when that uh, analytic, the counting is going to be active from the camera side. If uh, we're in a hour that is not mentioned on the schedule, it's not gonna work. As simple as that. Now, NVR settings, we're gonna do it from the NVR itself. So in your permission, I'm just going to skip it. And also this is the VMS setting, we skipped on the NVR. And also the VMS, I'm gonna skip and skip and skip it very fast since we are going to see it anyhow, uh, really, really soon. Okay. Okay, so we'll in 10 seconds in order to prepare it with your permission. Meanwhile, uh, I would like, I will send you now over the chat, the link uh, to the survey. We would like uh, very much to get from you a feedback about this webinar. So you are very welcome to, to fill in the, the form. Okay, let's send it in the end as well uh, also. Um, usually in the end, there is some time to fill up the survey. Well, then can you see the screen, the NVR? Yes. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so how to set, whatever we just said from the camera itself, you can do the same thing from the NVR. Okay, uh, it's really, really simple. Of course, I used the PC mouse, it's not gonna work. Now the NVR, so settings, okay. AI event, we're gonna access the artificial intelligence event, AI event, and it doesn't really matter which one you're gonna choose, even if we choose face recognition, which has nothing to do for here, but we're gonna, we're gonna get into the analytic menu, which includes object counting right here. 
So let's choose one of our counting cameras, back counting, for example. Okay, so we are in back counting camera in object counting. It is already enabled. Okay, so let's go through the let's go through let's go through the uh, uh, features that we have here. First of all, same as we saw with the camera, this is the alarm that we are going to draw. This is the direction from A to B or from B to A. Take a look at the actual arrow. It's from A to B. Okay, we can see the direction of the arrow. If I will change it, we can see that the arrow changes direction. But of course, we want the camera to get to uh, count entrance uh, as the actual entrance. Reset information, auto reset. We are talking about the parameters right on the top where it says how many people entered and left. Wow, it's 135 entered and left. This is the first time I can see it, okay. Um, of course, you can choose to reset it daily and then you choose the how well, when to reset it. You can choose month, weekly or monthly and monthly you will choose the day in the month and the hour, it's really simple. Um, if we'll cancel the statistics OSD, Okay, we will just, let me just reset it daily. Okay, if I, I, I uh, untick the statistics OSD, then we no longer have the, okay, the counter that we saw on the upper left. Bring it back and apply, and we have it once again. Okay, detection. Let's see if there is anything here that's left in the open. Uh, drawing the line, just use the mouse and you can draw the line in the direction that you want. I'm going to try to draw it as professionally as we did before. Yes, plus minus like this. And then going into detection object. Detection object, very, very simple. This is where we choose the objects that are going to be detected. Humans, cars, and two-wheel vehicles. Choose what you want to, uh, to, to count, okay? Okay, now, okay, now we're going to see, this is a, we are going to see analytics that we can take from the NVR. The analytics from the NVR are not the, as, 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 a, as rich as you can get from the VMS. We're gonna see it also in a sec, but also from the NVR. Okay, you can get a statistic for, uh, for example, for humans, we mentioned object counting, okay? And we mentioned oh, uh, humans, and we can get the countings that happened today. Today, the 15th of uh, June, right? We can see that it's six, between six to nine, between six to maybe to seven o'clock, nine people has entered and any hour has its own, um, uh, own uh, uh, details. Okay, now also you can export the information into a, a okay, into, an, into a discount key, just like this. Uh, also, you can do, you can search for the same information, but in a matter of a month. Okay, so we have here the entire month of June, and we can see how many people entered in any part of this, uh, of this month. Okay, in any day of this month. Okay, if anybody has any questions, or, on end, or, or just tell me, so we, we, since we're already on the NVR. Yes, we, are, we can see the NVR. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think that this is it for the NVR. Next thing that we're going to go is to the VMS. It will take me about 20 seconds to run it down. So if you have anything to say, Ronan, this is the time. Okay. Okay, Ronan, we can see the VMS? Yes, yes. Yes, perfect, thank you. Okay, so let me just close everything, including the counting that we need, just to show you how we, first of all, set up the camera. So if you want to set up a camera for counting, go into the live view, uh, just view the camera that you want. For example, this camera, the big counting. Uh, we have here a small button. Every camera has this button, channel settings. Press it, it will immediately take you into resource management. Of course, you can do the hard way and go into resource management, device settings, and then choose the camera, but it's way easier doing it from the live view. Now we can see uh, the image of the camera, right? We can choose even different cameras. 
if you want to set them up, to have here any kind of a, a set that you want, whether it is the stream, if you want to set the resolution or bit rate, a basic things. And you can also see the more advanced things like line crossing, face detection, and of course, people counting. So going into the people counting, I will answer a question that is normally being asked. We can see that we can set up the counting or any analytic from the camera, the VMS, and the NVR. Doesn't those things interrupt each other? I mean, what happens if you activate it on the NVR but deactivate it on the VMS? What happens? So the last one is the one that determines. Okay, so if I set up, a, if I activate it through the NVR and then went into the VMS and deactivated, the counting will be deactivated. And those uh, settings are uh, uh, being withdrawn from the last, uh, last platform that you used. So what can we see here in the people counting? You are right, we see exactly the same thing as we saw on the NVR and camera. We can see the line, we can see the direction, the objects, including saving the picture, okay? We can see the objects, vehicle, human, and the dual vehicle, and even we can see the counter. We can also choose how to and when to reset the counter from the VMS itself. And of course, you can draw also from here, okay? Same thing as I did before. Um, and also the statistics, which is show OSD, show OSD, OSD name. You can actually show uh, uh, the, the information or hide it. Now let's see a little bit about the information that we can get from the VMS itself. Um, a very important thing that before I, I said that I'm going to mention is this. The VMS has the ability to get, in, to get information for multiple cameras. Okay, if the NVR and the camera can give information from only one camera, the VMS can take even 30 cameras and, uh, and calculate the information that is taken from all of the cameras altogether to tell you how many people are in the building, even if the building has 10 different entrances. Okay, the VMS does the calculation. And of course, we're going to make a, a demo really soon to show how exactly how it works. But before that, statistics. We all love statistics, well, probably not, but uh, in this case, it's very, very beneficial since uh, it's very useful for the retail market. Okay, it's very useful for people that want to know in what day of a week they have the most visitors, for example. So let's start. We're starting from the real-time statistics. You can choose one camera and you can get the information from this camera. You can choose more cameras that can count and then the numbers will be a little bit different of course because the information is taken from more than one camera so what can we see here first of all we can see and let me remind it let me remind you that currently we are viewing only today the 15th of june how to take information from the past we're going to do it in two minutes from now so we can see that the uh, 471 people entered through these three cameras only today we can see a comparison for yesterday we, and we have a growth of 38%. We probably did something good. We can see also how many people left. Okay, 437 people has left through those cameras. Now I can tell you that one of the cameras, the street counting is placed outside. So of course it's, uh, it's placed outside only to get higher numbers. Okay, but uh, of course there is no uh, legality for how many, the, the, more, the amount of people that enter will also leave because it's uh, outdoors, one of the cameras. Uh, also, you can see the percent, the comparison for yesterday for the amount of people that left. Now also, you can see the ownership. Ownership means how many people are currently inside. You do the calculation, we get into 34. Also, we can see a graph of hours, zero o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, and we can see the graph that shows us, of course, we can cancel the graphs and show them how many people entered, how many people a left, okay? And we can see the comparison to yesterday. Same goes for entrance. Entrance for today, entrance for yesterday. This is probably the 43% that we saw before. We can see the same graph in the shape of a cake, okay? Every color represents a different kind of a camera. So the counting will be represented in green. A font counting camera will be represent, represented in purple. Of course, you can also uh, see the video from the cameras including the information, okay? The information that is taken uh, from the cameras themselves. 
for some reason we don't get any video now probably because of the zoom okay so we have here in the bottom a table okay so we have a table that also tells you you see the names of the cameras bay counting font counting and street counting we can see every hour between seven to eight o'clock how many people entered how many people left with the ability to export so in other words you can take this entire information and export it into an excel you can also export the tables as a picture okay if you press export right here you can export the entire uh, page that we can see here both of those graphs as a picture a, a graphical picture okay now we just saw how to do it for real time only for today let's get the same information but for a much longer period of time so again we're going to go into the statistics report we can see the exactly the same page just that in this case let's choose the same cameras all over again um, i didn't say that but but of course you can change okay you, i search for humans you can search for vehicles or two-wheel vehicles now instead of searching for a daily report let's search for a monthly report okay so now we are searching for the entire month of june search now the numbers are way way higher than what we saw before because now we get information from an entire month or 15 days to be precise 5,300 people has entered, 40,971 people has left. We can see the same, uh, okay, I won't repeat on the explanation because we already uh, understand it uh, from the uh, real-time uh, statistics that we did. In this case, we can see the same kind of graph, but in a way higher uh, scale. Okay, now not only that, you can create a comparison for two months. Just press the button down below, date, we can see now two uh, fields that we can fill information. So the first one will be my, my 2021. The other one will be June 2021. Let's see the numbers changing from 5,300 to 12,000 something people that has entered. Okay, the graph is drastically changes. We can cancel all of the graphs in order to have a clearer view. So if you want to understand how many people entered in in June, in a Mai, we're gonna press it. This is the amount of people, okay? Seven, eight, probably three, Friday and Saturday, people are not there. Uh, okay, we can see the graphs and we can see a comparison for how many people entered in June, this month. One month, uh, one month against one month. Okay, so of course, June is not uh, finished yet, but we can see that there is a, a strong battle between the two. Same thing you can do for left, for people that has left. Okay, you can just uh, play with the graphs as much as you want. Uh, by the way, you can also use the graph as a bar. Okay, it doesn't have to be like this, it can be a bar. Uh, same goes for the cake. Okay, we can see the same thing. And also, let's see, also we can see here uh, the table. In this case, the table is divided into days. The first of the month, the second until the 31. Okay, and every day tells you how many people entered and left for each camera with the ability to export it into Excel file. This is a strong tool for retail market and for a, a, a business owners that want to understand, want to divide how many people has uh, visited their location. And they can even, by smart moves, they can even uh, know on which parts of their inside their uh, a, a shop Okay, people has visited the most. Okay, now, since we are in the era still, uh, in the era of uh, COVID-19, by the way, uh, people usually ask us this question, the features that I showed you until now, including the statistics and the counting, they are free. We don't cost any money for our license in order to use the counting abilities or to get a uh, statistic reports and stuff like this all you have to do is to connect the cameras into the vms and voila so um next thing since we're in the covid 19 era we need to provide the ability for people to actually to to to, to limit the amount of a, a, a persons that are entering into a building how can we do it using the vms we're using occupancy control okay this is the final um, thing that we're going to see here on the vms Basically, we create a task. Let's call this task a limit 
people, for example. This is a bad thing. Let's call it a, a test. Okay, maximum threshold. How many people we want to allow to enter? 25 for this example only, okay? 25 people are allowed to enter. That's it. What are we limiting? Humans. You can also do that for, park, for uh, vehicles, for parking lots. Now, in this case, we have three cameras that count. So we are going to use the three of them. So the total number of people that enter through all of those three cameras will be taken in consideration of, for this task. Now, let's see how it works. Of course, I forgot to tell, but you have here the schedule, right? You have 24 seven, five days a week and some other uh, schedules that you can create. Those are just uh, schedules that we created. Now, as soon as one, uh, someone will pass one of the cameras, this camera will change its uh, counting per, uh, uh, counter, okay? And then those numbers are going to change. So instead of a vacancy of 25, we can see something else. Uh, here, something just happened, somebody crossed, and we can see that the numbers has changed. Okay, now the vacancy is seven. Okay, so 18 people are inside, seven more are allowed to enter. Uh, if a more people will somehow pass now, we're gonna see that it turns into red and, and give you a sound. What can we do with it? First of all, we can press the wheel right here, the task management, and we can write something. So we can write, please hold on, and the VMS will say, please hold on. So you can connect the speaker to your computer. It will say, please hold on. And of course, the other way to use this kind of uh, the triggers is to go into the alarm center, alarm linkage. I'm gonna do it really fast. Of course, we're gonna have an entire session just about those things. We already have those parts on YouTube and on our website. Uh, we just choose the proper event. Our event in this case is please, please wait while red light on. This is the task that we have created. We call it test. If we will name it test two, we are going to see that the name has changed into test two. Okay, and just like this, where you can set any trigger that you want, audio, PTZ, recording a camera, alarm view, uh, if you want to pop up uh, images into your uh, VMS, alarm output, so you can basically trigger alarms from any NVR, DVR or camera that has alarm outputs when this, ta this uh, task has finished, broadcasting a sound into a camera or an NVR. If you have a speaker connected to a distant camera, you can also uh, set a, a voice message from this camera. TV wall, if you have a decoder, trigger email. This is a new feature. You can trigger an email from the VMS. And the SOP standard of operation, if you guys know it. And the most important thing is the schedule. When that task is going to, uh, uh, when that event actually is going to take place. 24-7. Then we press apply. And of course, we're going to get nothing since we haven't checked anything. Um, okay. Moving back into, we are about two minutes from uh, uh, finishing. And of course, that our last part will be talking about, uh, we'll be talking about the fine tuning, if I remember correctly. Yes. So what is fine tuning? By the way, if you have questions, don't wait, don't wait for the end. Please ask away on the chat. You're going to get answers. And I think that you already do it. It's very good. So fine tuning. What happened? We installed the camera in our client's house. Our installer installed the camera and everything is good. Everything is working. But maybe after one, two, three days, maybe things are not very satisfactory. So two things that we need to remember. One of them is very, really, probably everybody already do it. Make contact into your client. Make sure that the system is work as it should, because we're talking about analytic, not just motion detection. Maybe something is a little bit off. Maybe something is not being recognized all the way in. So make sure that the, the client is satis satisfied. Second thing, since most of the problems can be fixed from remote connection into the camera or into the NVR and then going into the camera, um, it's very important to keep a, a connection, okay? So IP, IP connection into the NVR or camera P2P, a username and password, at least for a few days, then we, we will be able, and you will be able to assist your client in getting the, uh, in the results that he paid for actually. Um, okay, so if the system performance is not satisfactory, the reasons are usually will be 
due to settings, which we can fix if we have the direct connection into the set into the system. Environmental conditions, the hard world that we talked about uh, before, if we have a severe uh, fog or rain, and we didn't really mention it, but also when you install camera outdoors and this thing has happened, you have uh, sometimes you have a, a bug like a spider or an ant or a fly or anything, a big butterfly that covers the lens for say a few seconds and then show it all over again. Then somehow things go wrong. Maybe a parking vehicle will be counted or anything like this. It's very, very rare, but it can happen. Things that we cannot control. Last reason for having a not satisfactory installation is the installation. This is the, the thing that we want to avoid the most, we don't want to have uh, a, a bad installation. This is why we also making this webinar from the start, from the beginning. Um, so of course we need to install it uh, in, in a proper way. So in the settings, what can be the cause for, for that example, if you remember um, a setting in this part that can cause the camera not to work as it should, will be the line. We just, whoever set up the camera draw the line too low okay from the rail and whenever people are crossing they do not touch touch the the uh, the line and it's it will not count another reason can be that if the camera for some reason was shifted downwards a little bit this is also can happen if, i don't know if a bird had the bird hit it or something maybe the installer didn't uh, tighten the screw all the way in um, and of course, in this case, what will be better to do is to draw the line very big from to, to begin with. Okay, so it will cover the person uh, uh, for 100%. Okay, so the correction will be to reposition the line, of course. Okay, uh, now a recognition problem can be the, the can be caused because of a poor image. Okay, poor image can be a direct light on an object, on the camera, or many different cases. Maybe the line is in the shadow. The line is in the shadow and the other part of the frame is lit by the sun or something. Then you will activate WDR. It will most likely fix the, fix the problem because it will uh, give you a picture which is in the middle between the shadow and the light and area. So of course you guys already know that. Uh, installation. I'm not gonna tell you anything new right now, just to install the camera all over again. Uh, according to the, okay, according to the uh, specification we already gave the recommendation with the strong light, okay, direct light on the camera, strong light on the object and the uh, many different factors that they uh, might, uh, uh, might not help us to, to recognize properly the anything uh, here. Okay. Uh, if anyone has any a question up to now, please ask away. You can open up your mic and uh, ask away the question. By the way, I'm going to send you guys a, a survey. 